Hello again. Uh, what we're going to tie this morning is a little white marabou fly. It's a special request from my friend uh, Richard, whose uh, buddy Jean uh, took his fly and fished it with success, and he would like to know exactly how I tie it on a trout hook. So this morning that's what we're going to do. First thing we're going to use is uh, the hook I like to use is a Mustad 3366 straight eye hook. Outstanding. I fished it for trout and salmon both. I'm going to use uh, some crystal, uh, some uh, mirror flash, crinkle flash for the wing, and I'm going to use a little bit of holograph clear tinsel uh, for the body. The, the distance I've used, uh, the distance between the eye and the point of contact here is, is depends about how many fly, feathers you're going to put on. I always use two. Uh, some use one. I feel that's not enough. I even put three sometimes. So this is just a matter of winding this on. And back nice and tight. If it's not tight, it's going to come apart. Not going to be a happy camper. It's a very simple fly to tie. They're all tied. I tie all mine basically all the same. So any fly that you see in my Facebook, etc. on marabou flies, you can figure out I've that's what I've done. Then I'll tie in my first feather. And we'll talk about that in a second. Some people, I have some short marabou that I save for the my trout flies. Some people don't have this uh, short stuff. So it's just a matter of, right now I tie mine on by the butt. All of them. Grab it by the tip. I use this method because I want to I want to create a cone shape which makes it, it look like a bait fish more than just slapping the marabou on there. I suppose that will work too, but this is the way I do it all the time. And I found it to be successful. And it's just a matter of knocking off the knots out of there. Now if this, if one feels that this feather is too long, rather than taking an, a scissors and cutting it and looking like a paintbrush, then you can always tie on a paintbrush instead, but the way you should do it, really, I think, is just to pinch it off with your fingers, and you can shorten this fly up to the length that you feel is, is convenient for yourself, how you feel comfortable with this particular fly. Next thing I'll do is put two pieces of uh, crinkle flash on there. Bring that up like that. Side by side work great get it to work. Put them on there. I put them on now. I don't like putting them on after. I think it's too much. Shows up too much. You only want to want it to show up once when the current takes the uh, takes the fly, works the fly. Once in a while it'll, this crinkle will pop up and it really is a nice attractor. So I put two pieces on each side. That should be the very best. Now I'll take another feather in this case, I'm going to put two to it on this morning. And, and bring your thread down to your tying point. Because I've got to put a collar on there yet, so I need room. You don't want to go around there choking your head. And then you can't put anything else on there, and you wonder why. Uh, just keep your distances away from that. Better off, as far as I'm concerned, have too much space and not enough. Everybody can tie this fly. Don't be concerned about long feathers. I showed you. It's just a matter of of adjusting, and you can do that. There, that looks pretty good, just like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of uh, of teal flank. You want the economical stuff, or I call it the El Cheapo stuff, because it has the better markings and it twists around the uh, the hook very nicely. You can use just one side of the the feather if you like. I think I like two. That's one's decision. Tie, tie that on. Grab it by the butt there. There we go. Now these feathers don't always cooperate, but you can make them cooperate. You know, just a matter of forcing the issue a little bit. Hanging on to it. There. Looks pretty good to me. I like a feather on there because it gives a little bit of contrast to in the water. 
those that don't want to cooperate, well, you know what to do. Little piece there, don't like him. Then I'll put a piece, put a little piece of uh, yarn wool on there. Red, I like red. It serves as gills. I wrap that around my hook. Bring it up to the, to the shank. Whoops. Tie that on securely. There you go. Then I'll nip it off with the length I want. In this case, about that long. You can have it shorter if you like. If you find it's too long, make it a little shorter. Then I'll take a couple of uh, jungle cock eyes. Dress it up a wee bit. Put the far one on first. There, there's one. Put that on here. Put that on. That up real good. Flip it over. Secure. Yes or none. There, that should go right about there. Whoops. Out of place a bit. That over. That should get both sides. Then I like a red head on all of these flies. Something I started. And like some people ask how we get these these reasonably small heads well it's a matter of flattening your thread twisting it around just let it hang there if you're not too sure which way it goes all right hand turns on that and then it's just a matter of whip finishing it right to left Back again. Bob's your uncle. Very simple and effective Meru fly. Like I said, basically, they're all tied the same fashion in a way the ones that I do. Don't complicate my life. And a little bit of lacquer on here. I fished them with a non-slip mono loop. You should look that up on a on Google. A repella knot, same difference. And there's a fly. It's, it's a very effective fly. Okay. Easy to tie. And it's worth having in your box. I tie this, I use this a lot. Certainly, if the barometer pressure drops and the fish are not active uh, on the top surface, then I'll go down and get them with this. So, thank you very much. Wish you all the best in tight lines.